From here I can see very far. Even the Red Cross Children's Hospital, where children are saved and babies are saved. Baby Michael is a dying baby. I can't describe it differently, but he's a fighter. And I think about the poem of Rudyard Kipling. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve you long after they are gone and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the world which says to them, hold on. Baby Michael, a little life born like a candle in the wind. Get coffee. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's go to the next one. We're going to six hours and then we're going to go to the bed. Okay, so how long? Eight hours. Eight hours? Yeah. Okay, eight hours for now? No, eight hours for the morning. Oh, okay. So what's the coffee for you? You get the day coffee. The day coffee? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I feel my life is powered by an unknown entity taking me where I should be, taking me to Facebook this time. It was a Christmas baby for two young people in love, a complicated love affair. Christian Talita. Maar dit is een baie mooi naam daar. Ek wil vir jou bykie vraag, jy het mekaar in George ontmoet? Nee? Is dit nie so nie? Vier jaar gelede. In die oomlik toe jy mekaar ontmoet het, was jy totaal verlief op mekaar. Ja. Waar was dit? By wat plek? In George. O, en toe nooi haar pa vir jou? Hmm, ons vang baie vis. Ek was op die stadium in Limpopo gewees. Ja. Ek het een gast huis daar so bestuur. En, eh, Toe besluit ek om op te skop en George te gaan, achter die ene aan, en ja, die rest is geskiedenis. So by the way, wat het jou verlief van maak op my? Hmm, weer aardig weer. Ja. Ons het net geklik. Ek meen, die oomlik dat jy gesien het, toe weet ek wie jy is en ek weet wat jy is, en ek het verlief geraak op. En toe maak jy mond oor. Hmm, so, hoe kom het jy verlief geraak op my? Wel, toe ons net ontmoet het, wil jy my nie een drukkie gegeet het. So, ons moest, ek moest mooi gevraag het vir een drukkie. Ja. Jy was snaak so wees, jy het jy altyd grappig gemaakt met my, en ek kon net jy gehelp het. Mooi, oké. Nee, dat is goed om te weet. Toe raak jy verwachtend. Ek het het vermoed. So, toe vat ons maar toetsie en... Ja, het is een poort op die. En toe gaan vertel die eerste vir hom. Nee? A mother, Gerda Kreer, was disappointed that her only daughter was pregnant. In fact, she was not on speaking terms with her daughter when she gave birth to baby Michael, born 4th December 2018. My mom was 
squad geweest. Niet nie gelukkig geweest, nie, want ik was op universiteit en ons het, ek wil eerst school gemaakt het voor onze familie begin en, maar ja, ze was, so was redelijk kwaad geweest, maar ze het vannacht dit aan voor en, ja. Kijk, Talita is, is die enigste kind en ek is ouwer as sy, ek het baie ouwer, ek is 37 en sy is 22, hoor 22 en um, mama is beskermend, sy is wat enige ma beskermend is voor die kinders. Mensen zien een groot gaping en ouderdom als een negatief vaakje. Ik denk dat ik wel besef dat ik is niet daar om uh, advantage te vatten. We stellen mensen het. Ja, dat ik raar leven vind dat ik dat ik dat ik eerst mijn leven met alles spandeer en een familie wil beginnen. Toen to denk ik die water onder die brug en dus vergeven en vergeten en ons gaan aan. Ons is familie en ons groeien nog elke dag nader elkaar. I'm actually here today for uh, baby Michael, you know. Yes. What is the problem there? He has um, a condition, a congenital heart defect. Yeah. Um, where the is called AVSD, meaning atrioventricular septal defect. So the septum, the, the heart um, has got four chambers. Yes. All the chambers are separated by septa. So there's a deficiency in the septum uh, in the middle, just in the middle of the heart, where everything is open. It's like an open top. It's, yes. it's open. So the blood is just mixing. Blood goes from left side to the right side. So what it does, it overfills the lungs. And then there's too much congestion in the lungs and too much circulation in the lungs. And uh, sometimes you can't breathe nicely. Sometimes you get the recurrent chest infections or sometimes you can get heart failure if it's not treated. And uh, the only um, definite, uh, definitive treatment is uh, surgery, all right? But at, when the child is, 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 is bigger enough to, to tolerate surgery. Ik zeker weer zo twee jaar in Lotto ben. Ja, oké. Okay. Dan wil ik een boot bouwen. Ik, 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 ik het groot droom om een dag mijn eigen blauwwater katamaran te bouwen. En dan wil ik voor Talita en voor Michael de wereld gaan wijzen. En om leren over de natuur en conservatie en hoe om net hoe om mens te wees. Ik wil net, ik weet het, ik wil een happy, happy barbecue. Ja. Yeah. Happy barbecue, ja. Ik ben dat is daar wat, wat ons net niet meer wil nie, of kan niet, of moeg is, tot in je zielen moeg is voor alles wat verkeerd gaat. Maar ik ben dan, dan gaan speel je met die manneke en hij, hij lacht en hij smile voor jou en is, maar ja, dan, zoals het zei, stel, all is forgiven. Als hij, als hij heel dag, Heil en ongemakkelijk is en zeer het en hij smaalt dat één keer voor je, dan vergeet hij van al die, al die negatieve, van al die angst. En dan, dan zie je weer, dan zie je weer happy, dan zie je niet meer kans van nog een dag. Is mooi hier voor mij? Michael, Michael.
Want toen jy uitgevind het, jou kind het IVSD, hoe het jy hulle gevoel daar weer? Dit was Pilei, Dr. Pilei in Uitenhaag. Hy het actie vir ons een scan van net gedoen en gesien dat daar is iets nie heel te maal raag met sy haarkie nie. Hy is die eerste dokter wat gediagnotiseer het dat hy vermoed is IVSD en hy het ons toe verwees na Dora. Ja, dit is nie, dit is nie baie lekker om te hoor nie. Ek meen, daar is laat soveel worries en goed op jou wat jy aan dink om jy kind in die leven te hou en groot te kry en dan vind jy uit, daar is nog een ekstra stap of een ekstra hekkie wat jy hoor moet spring. So technically, the, the surgery is, is quite difficult to do a full repair of this defect in such a small baby, which is normally in our unit, we wait until they are a bit bigger. And the problem at the moment is that he's not feeding well and not gaining weight. Tell me, uh, what is the next step from here onward? We want to have all that information and give it to the surgeon and tell him, look, uh, we don't have the care. Yeah, that, that is that yes, uh, that is, is another problem at, at the moment is that we are cardiac catheterization laboratory where we because normally we do that before a patient goes for surgery for workup so that this, we can give the surgeon all the information necessary. Um, and we've had a problem since last year with that. It's just a, a problem for us in that we we do a lot of uh, catheter-based procedures, diagnostic and interventional. We were doing about 200 a year, so for say babies with holes in the heart that we could close in the cath lab without them having to go for open heart surgery. At the moment, we can't offer that service, so that there's a it's a lot of patients to to expect uh, another service to, to take over and to help with. So. Therefore, we need to look at ways to, to resolve the issue. It's, it's quite, quite something. Um, so not having that cat lab each day that goes by. How long, have, how yes. long is it now that you don't have that? Yeah, I think since towards the end of last year, I think November, December, that's, that's when it, it was declared irreparable. May I ask you this equipment that we are talking about and that is jeopardizing all these activities here, how much is it? 15 and 20 million rand. That's all? That's all, yeah, that's all. That's what uh, it will cost to, to put a new unit. And, and that's, that's, that's what is really required, because uh, without that, we can't diagnose and we can't, we can't offer the intervention. There's a lot of patients that have coronary heart disease, for instance, that do not have insurance, but I mean, no one can assist them anyhow because the service isn't there. And, and, and for me, that's, that's not acceptable, I'm afraid. So a lot of, we lose a lot of patients? We lose a lot of patients. You take the 15% that has got medical insurance, how many patients go through St. George's Hospital, Greenacre's Hospital, and they get their stents inserted? And then the 85% of the population gets nothing at this point in time. Then it, it, it is acceptable that they must just die. Mm -hmm.
One of the big challenges in general is the availability of congenital heart surgeons. They are a rare find. I don't think we have more than 10 of them trained across the country. I don't think the government has prioritized congenital heart surgery to where we, we want the government to do that. There are many other competing priorities uh, uh, with healthcare in general. How bad is this IVSD? In Cape Town, Susan Foslow will tell you the most challenging open heart surgery in children mm. is actually an AVSD <laughs> uh, repair because it's very difficult to repair all the valves in the heart in that big hole. Back to the old side. Uh, yeah. We're going into this ward. Uh, it should be inside the ward, I think. It should be in there, I'm sure. Dat ik zing, ik heb zo lang gewacht om voor jou te zien. <laughs> Hallo. Yeah. Um, this pipe is used for, for feeding. Is that for feeding? Yeah. yeah. Explain to me now that. Um, we call it a nasogastric tube. So it's when you're feeding difficulties. I'm not sure if she was vomiting, she couldn't take in, or there's something with, uh, you know, sometimes babies have obstruction. They can uh, have uh, reflux, they can have a lot of other stuff. So they put a pipe, um, a nasogastric tube in to help with the feeding. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Omar. Yeah. Young Omar. Yeah. Omar, yeah. <laughs> Omar, yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Gonna be opened up. Hmm? Yeah. Gonna be opened up. Hmm. So, so nice. <laughs> Cape Town, I consulted Professor Liesel Zulke. We met outside Grutteskeer. Tell me, I want to ask you, Professor, what can I do to help maybe Michael at the Dora and Ginza Hospital in PE? Is there anything that I can do? What would you advise me to get that baby transferred to the Red Cross Hospital? It's more difficult when the patient has to still come to us because, you know, you have to not only time the transfer, you have to also time the surgery. And transfer is a very vulnerable period for a child who's been very sick. So I think the most important thing really, if I was working in PE or you know, giving advice to the doctors in PE, is to try and get him as stable as possible. We sometimes have to transfer patients on a ventilator, um, and this may be the most appropriate thing for you to do, so to come from one ICU to the other, rather than for waiting for him to be well enough to go to the ward. So I would imagine the sooner the better, but you cannot take a risk that something can happen during the transfer because he probably has to fly to us um, so we just have to make that very careful timing 
Um, I think if there is something you can do, mm -hmm. the most important thing you can do is raise awareness of the mm -hmm. issues around congenital heart disease in this mm -hmm. country. How are the team of doctors and PE planning to get baby Michael to the Red Cross Children's Hospital for surgery? We are elated when we get the news baby Michael will be flown to Cape Town on an emergency flight. Then the devastating news. Stormy weather forced the flight back to PE. Baby Michael is now back at the Gora and Hospital. Mm -hmm.